Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and, uh, Bismillahir Rahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and uh, this is the second videos uh, on the uh, pattern of the transmission of the uh, single gene trait. Uh, in the last video I've told you that the uh, pattern of transmission of single gene trait they are also known as the Mendelian one because Mendel for the first time observed them in the uh, pea plant. Then I've told you that the uh, genes that have different versions uh, which are known as the alleles and these alleles may be due to the mutations or the uh, polymorphism and the alleles can be a normal allele and that can be the uh, diseased allele. I've told you that the uh, expression uh, patterns of the mutated allele with respect to the normal allele can be characterized as the dominant, the co-dominant or the uh, recessive one and uh, then I've told you that there are actually uh, five basic modes of inheritance for the single gene diseases and we describe them as the autosomal dominant, the autosomal recessive, the X-linked dominant, the X-linked recessive and the mitochondrial one. And then I've told you that two of the excellent uh, resources for information about the uh, single gene diseases. One is known as the OMIM, which is the uh, online Mendelian inheritance in man and the second one that is the gene test or the uh, gene clinics. Now, in this particular video, uh, I want to focus uh, in a little bit detail about the five basic modes of inheritance that we uh, discussed in the last video. So, the first one uh, that we discussed that was the autosomal dominant and I've told you that the autosomal dominant means that the gene can express itself in the homozygous and in the heterozygous condition, therefore we call that as the dominant and it is autosomal because the gene causing that particular disease is present on the autosomal chromosome that is from the chromosome number 1 to the chromosome number 22. Now, uh, some of the important properties uh, about the uh, autosomal dominant one is that each affected person has an affected parent. So this is, uh, you can say, uh, a very uh, good character for determining the autosomal dominant nature of the uh, gene that each affected person has an affected parent. And it occurs in every generation because uh, the autosomal dominant expression only needs the uh, presence of a single allele. So if one of the parent is affected, that means that the next generation is going to get uh, that particular gene from that particular parent and it is going to express that particular uh, disease. Uh, the second one is the autosomal recessive. And I've told you that it is recessive because it can express itself only in the homozygous condition or you can say that two copies of the mutant allele are required for the expression of this particular disease. This is autosomal again this means that the gene will be present somewhere from the chromosome number 1 to the chromosome number 22. Now if you talk about the characters of the autosomal recessive you can say that both parents of an affected person are carriers. The reason is that they are carriers that uh, one of the parent uh, is transferring a one mutant allele and the other parent is transferring another mutant allele and if a person is getting both of the mutant allele it is going into the uh, recessive nature thereby expressing that particular disease. And this is not typically seen in every generation because if a person is getting a normal copy of a gene from uh, one parent and if it is getting a mutant allele from the uh, other parent, it will be considered as a carrier and it is uh, not going to express that particular uh, disease. Uh, the third one that we discussed, that was the uh, X-linked dominant and I've told you that this dominant is uh, that it can express itself in the homozygous as well as in the heterozygous condition and X-linked means that that particular gene is present on the uh, X chromosome which is causing the uh, disease. Now when you talk about the X-linked dominant that females that are uh, frequently affected and uh, when you talk about this X-linked dominant another important property is uh, can have affected male and female in the uh, same generation. Now it is more common in uh, females because the female have got two copies of the X chromosome and it have the it can have the chance of getting that particular uh, mutant allele from the father as well as from the mother. So the chances they are more in the females. When you talk about the males 
so as the males they are only getting their X chromosome from their mother so if their mother is affected that particular male can have the chances of the expression of that particular disease so as there is only one X chromosome in the male so the chances of getting an X link dominant disease decreases by 50% as compared to the uh, female now when you talk about the X-linked recessive one and the X-linked recessive is more common in male as compared to the female and the reason is very simple in X-linked uh, recessive one uh, you need two copies of the uh, mutant allele so as the male is getting one X chromosome from the mother uh, one uh, uh, is only getting one X chromosome from their mother they do not have the uh, X chromosome from their father so they are already 50% deficient for for that particular allele so if they are getting even a single copy from their mother they are going to express that particular disease and the affected male they of they are often present in uh, each generation when you talk about the uh, mitochondrial one the mitochondria can affect both the males and the females uh, but only passed on by females uh, it is an established fact that the mitochondria that is only transferred to the next generation from the mother and not from the father but the males and the females that can be affected but the mitochondrial diseases that are only passed on by the uh, females and the mitochondrial diseases that can appear in uh, every generation so the males and the females they, they have got equal chances of getting uh, a mitochondrial uh, disease allele and expressing the uh, that particular uh, disease if I give you uh, some of the uh, important examples that we will be discussing in the uh, uh, in the coming videos or in the course of the human genetics so if you talk, if you talk about the important examples of the autosomal dominant disease one is known as the Huntington disease which is an actually an autosomal dominant one uh, another one is the neurofibromatosis the third one is achondroplasia so these are just some of the examples of the uh, autosomal uh, dominant diseases when you talk about the autosomal recessive one some of the important examples are the Tay-Sachs disease the sickle cell edemia the cystic fibrosis and the phenylketonuria so don't worry about these uh, diseases we will be discuss we will be uh, discussing them in detail uh, in our coming videos and you talk about the uh, X-linked dominant one one of the uh, important disease uh, which is the X-linked dominant is known as the uh, vitamin D resistant rickets or sometimes that is known as the hypophytamic rickets uh, another important example is the uh, ornithine transcarboamylase deficiency this is another disease which is coming under the heading of the X-linked dominant one when we talk about the uh, extinct recessive one, uh, one of the important example is the hemophilia A and the other one is known as the Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Uh, the examples of the uh, mitochondrial one, they are known as the Leber's heredity optic neuropathy and the other one is known as the Kern's sire syndrome. So uh, this was just an introduction to the uh, pattern of transmission of the single gene trait and in the coming videos we will be discussing the uh, examples from each of the five basic modes that we discussed in these uh, two videos in this one and in the previous video so if you like the video please subscribe to my channel hit the like button and share it with your friends